All right, y'all, today we are at the beach. We stopped at the bait shop, picked up some fresh shrimp. Today is the day, man. I'm not messing around anymore. So you guys know I've kind of been on the journey to catch a keeper pompano, which doesn't like seem like it should be such a struggle, but I don't, <laughs> dude, freaking mother nature is making us work for it. Here's the thing though, this time of the year, we're kind of like, I feel like at the tail end of the pompano run. They kind of run from the Carolinas at this time of year, all the way down to South Florida. We're in Northish Florida, so it's kind of almost past us, but I think there's still some around. Hopefully, please. Y'all can kind of see there's like nobody on this beach. It is freaking beautiful out right now. I just, I want to catch a fish, man. Of course, like Pompano, like, yeah, I want to catch one of those, but I'm just down to catch anything that freaking bites. Maybe we could do a little catch cook. As always, man, when you're out fishing, especially saltwater fishing, you never know what the heck could happen. So we're gonna get these two rods set up. We're kind of gonna rig them a little bit different than I've been doing because I've kind of been learning stuff and yeah. All right, so we're not wasting any time here. I just got this first rod set up. This is what we're going with today. A little bit different than what you guys have possibly seen me use here. So from my experience from fishing a bunch of beaches and stuff, I don't know if I'm ever gonna beach fish again without using one of these. This is called a Sputnik sinker. Basically, this gets you stuck in the sand. These things kind of like claw the sand and it sticks really, really, really well. Then when you wanna reel them in, they do that. So you set them up like this and then they kind of break away if you pull hard enough. The nice thing too, if you're using circle hooks like we're using today, since this thing is such like an anchor, they'll for sure hook themselves because it'll be in the corner of the mouth and they'll pull against this, boom. In theory, that is. All right, we got this thing all rigged up here. So we're doing something different again. A lot of the times I fish for Pompano, or basically every time recently I've been fishing for Pompano, it's been with one of those Pompano rigs that has a float. A lot of people say different things about the floats. I don't know. They worked at the pier, but off the beach, just, I don't know. It's different. So we just have a double dropper loop rig and we have a little circle hook with shrimp and then that is sand flea bites. And then we have another one up there. So double dropper loop, different sinker. Tide is coming in. It is looking gorgeous out here. Let's try to get this right. About... That'll work for now. And we are good to go one rod. Let's go see now what we want to do on this second one. There's a big old bird out there. It's just crazy though, the amount of like fishing expeditions I've been on the past couple weeks. That's probably how we uh, messed up this a little bit more. I'm getting an MRI this next coming week and we'll see where to go from there. Definitely not feeling the best, but I have been exploring beaches, seeing what works, talking to people. There's a lot that goes into this kind of fishing, man. Second rod rigged up, ready to go. Same thing, same pretty much exact rig. Chuck this way out there. The other one's a little bit closer in. This one's going the distance, baby. Ah! That's pretty good. All right, put it in the rod holder and we are good to go. We are fishing, man. This left rod is a little bit closer in. Right rod is a little bit further out. I do see a lot of birds though. A lot of birds are diving, so there might be some bait around, man. It might be pretty good. Wow, that's crazy how much it cools off when the sun goes behind the clouds. Some big old dark clouds back there. Hopefully it's not gonna storm on us. Freaking Florida, man. Come on. The next, like, I don't know how many days, it's gonna get extremely windy again and just stormy and it's just gonna cloud this whole water up. So this, honestly, it kind of feels like this is our last chance at a pompano in this area of Florida, which I've been going so hard. I just wish that we could get one. Hopefully we'll get one. I mean, we have got them, but you know, they're like little tiny things, not like edible keeper fish. If not, I mean, we could always go down south more Florida and there's always the west coast, which the west coast, I haven't really messed around, but it seems like just crazy fishing, like crazy. And they have pompano over there too, so. Come on, man. Two rods, some shrimp and a dream. All right, I don't know if you can see this. I'm just chilling here, fishing. Can I turn around? Can you see that? These people are on freaking horses. I blame the horses, man. That's gotta be the reason we're not getting bit.
it's for sure the horse's fault but i was not expecting this i went a few hours like without one bite that's when i met seth he was also fishing and he said he watches the vids shout out to you he caught some pompano recently but on some sand fleas so he actually caught me a few fleas and i put them on my hooks and sent them out i didn't even know this beach had sand fleas but this was like one of the coolest things it's so cool when fishermen help one another out and also because of this dumb foot i can't really even get into the wash to try and catch these fleas so yeah i, I really appreciate it so now we have on a bait that directly matches the hatch and what these fish are actually feeding on at this beach but i didn't catch any fish on them i actually did get one bite but i think it might have just like slurped the flea off and spun the block after all that i was not giving up hope i'll tell you what There we go. Got him. What is that? All right, we're casting closer to shore now. Do I still have that on? Dude, imagine if this is one. I just switched back to the shrimp. What is that? What is that? Okay. I'm not mad about it. Oh, dude, that's a nice one too. Big old whiting. Big ol' whiting. All right. These things are actually delicious. We're gonna... We're gonna see if there's a few more of them around here. I know it's getting dark. Oh, right away. Right away, right away. Dude. There could be other stuff mixed in. Hold on a second. Of course, right when we're running out of time, right when the sun's about to set, that's when things start hitting. Oh my God, oh my God, oh, they run. Other rod, other rod. Okay, that's a freaking. It's a waiting. Oh, both of my rods are getting hit, dude. Oh no. What do we got here? This one's a little further out. Holy man. Oh. Um. What is that? Bro, we're about to get spooled. Oh my God, we're gonna get spooled. Okay. Okay. Well, you know how they say don't go in the water around dusk. That, um, pretty sure that was a big freaking shark. Holy crap. Holy crap. I, that could have been a tarpon too. All right, it's like actually dark now.
All right, all right. So it seems like uh, we just do not have the best. Hey, where are you going, man? <laughs> okay. So it seems like we do not have the best luck with the Pompano. I just, I don't know, man. It's just not in the cards. But what is kind of nice about it is that when we actually finally catch one, it's going to be so sick. Like, it's going to be so freaking worth all these hours of fishing, all this walking. And I mean, I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying and learning a lot of stuff. The thing is, too, like, don't look at these videos and be like, oh, Pompano, that's like a really hard fish to catch. It's really not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. People have been catching them. I just hope that maybe we can get out one more day or a couple more days if they're still here. It all depends on the weather and on this freaking thing right here, which by the way, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it too much, but for all you guys wondering about foot updates, today is the next day after you guys just saw me uh, go fishing. And I got an MRI this morning. It was like an hour long when they did the foot and the ankle. A lot of freaking money later and then now I have to... See, this is the, the thing, man. Get the MRI, which I had to wait a couple days for after going to the doctor to like schedule that. And now I have to schedule another doctor appointment, but that's going to be a week from now because he can't see me. And luckily that's like, like that's pretty soon for a doctor. Like sometimes they're like, hey, yeah, you can schedule an appointment um next year oh yeah we'll get you in in like five months you're like bro what the f five freaking what so it's only a week but that's still like oh, we gotta wait a whole other week to see what's actually going on and uh hopefully we get a better idea of the foot stuff we've got something coming in the next video that will be pretty interesting um something i never thought i would buy but that will yeah be in the next video the foot saga freaking continues man it's just it's it's yeah as i keep saying things could be worse though we didn't really catch anything up until the sun was just going down and like you could not barely film i know it's a little grainy in the video but we finally got on some fish and it was some big tanky whiting and i think what had happened i don't know if you guys really saw it in the clip or not but i was kind of dealing with two different rods the one rod on the right the big rod that got bit and i think the left one got bit as well and then that's what happened i think the whiting bit the shrimp and then it was kind of thrashed around probably on the hook and then a shark came over it had to be a shark or a tarpon but i'm thinking it was a shark and just swallow that freaking whiting then shoom, take off let me know if you guys will want to see some like shark videos that would be something pretty cool i mean you got to be very knowledgeable and uh very prepared for that but it, it almost took all of our line man We ended up getting, I think, four keeper whiting. And these were actually pretty decent size too. Cut them up, we got them on the plate here. I'm just going to dry them off, do a little dab in it. We're gonna cook like a nice, fancy little feast, man. A feast delicious enough to cure a foot. If you guys saw the last video, this is gonna be our Greg tax. I'm gonna leave one little filet right there. We'll check back and see if we got any visitors. Kinda hopping around on one foot these days. You might be wondering, oh, what's a Greg tax? Who's Greg? If you guys didn't see the last video make sure to check it out man basically greg is our neighbor hey buddy you want to say anything you want to say hi <laughs> you know i don't really know what happened man he used to be my sous chef but every time i cook nowadays he just sleeps i guess he's just on watchdog duty isn't that face terrifying all right so what i'm thinking here is we're gonna kind of try to make a nice little feast i know sometimes like we just taste test things or you know we just cook a little bit of fish today we're gonna cook all the fish that we caught which I, I just still can't believe like after the whole day of no catching fish just like in the last little bit and i released like a good amount of fish too like in the last little bit you guys couldn't even see like i fished until real dark i actually ended up getting torn up by skeeters so this is what we we're going with man something you know a little easy i love me some tater tots got these straight out of the freezer we're not gonna go too crazy but this is so good and easy. So, tots, air fryer. Put this on. Do like seven minutes. We're not gonna turn that on just yet. Pan. Butter. A lot of butter. <laughs> Feeling like fisherman's life out here. All right, that's already smelling freaking amazing. These days, there's basically three ingredients that I personally use whenever I cook. First one is onion powder. Now we're gonna put a little bit of onion in here already, but i will go around with a little onion powder, a little of this stuff, garlic powder. Also, I'm gonna make this smell good in this house. And then you can never go wrong, man, with the static spicy seasoning. If you guys have not already, man, if, you, you know, if you've been wanting to maybe check this out, 
there is going to be a promotion going on all for the rest of November. This will probably be the cheapest time to ever buy this stuff if you guys want to try it. I'm going to put a lot of this in here, man. We're going to create some good static butter. Oh my god. All right, we're going to turn that down just a little bit. That is smelling so freaking good. All right, she's ready. So first we're just gonna handful of onions in there. And we're just gonna lay the fish down in there. This is smelling so freaking good, man. I'm telling you though, anything you wanna cook, Static butter is just, oof. It's personally my favorite way to make things. This might not look the most appetizing at the moment. Just give it a second. Oh yeah, just give it a second. I thought about doing like a little deep fry action, but that's always, I don't know. It always just causes so much of a cleanup process. And there's like so many different moving parts and stuff. This is just honestly my overall way that I like cooking fish. I can already tell you this is going to be freaking good. Alright, let's give it a second to heat up. Alright, so we got the tots in here. Around like halfway through, I'm going to shake that up and put it back in for the rest of the time. But look at, just look at this, man. This is what I am freaking talking about. This is pretty much all done. We've got the onions all cooked down. The fish cooked super quickly. We've got that beautiful Cajun static butter. And then I put a little bit more static seasoning just on top of the fish right now. Just, just look at it, look at it. That piece looks so freaking good right there. I, I gotta tell you, that is gonna be amazing. I've had whiting a few times. I gotta say, man, they are, they're up there on my list for sure. Not exactly sure how they uh, match up to the Pompano. One day we will freaking find out though, dude, the freaking Pompano Chronicles. I'm telling you, a couple years from now, we're gonna look back and be like, oh, yeah, we've caught hundreds of Pompano. You know, it just took one to open up the floodgates. You know, one day. And we'll be looking back and we'll be like, oh yeah, that freaking foot, man, that was, uh, yeah. Whew. Glad that healed. <laughs> Smell like a restaurant here. All right shake these dudes around a little bit. I don't know about y'all, but I like my tots crispy. Real crispy. And then that is still, I could probably turn this off now. That looks amazing. All right, and here is the finished product. We got this in here for me. That's going to be for Kelsey when she gets home in a little bit. Look at this, man. All right, let's see what this is talking about. Get a little bit of the fish. It is definitely flaky. Y'all see that? Ooh, she's steaming. Not pompano, but not a problem. I will happily take a fish any day, especially fresh waiting. That is so freaking good, man. Let's try these little tots. As y'all could see, we crispified them to perfection. I don't know if y'all can see the smoke on that thing too. This is just the best part about catching cooks, man. And I always used to say this. To be honest, there's not many things cooler than going out, having a plan, catching your own food, bringing it back home, feeding yourself, feeding your family with it, feeding Greg. Even while injured, we prevail. Oh my gosh, you guys are so crooked right now. Sometimes I like to smash my tater tots a little bit just to get like a little landing spot for some static on it. I don't know, you guys probably can't even see that. Stack taters. Mm. All right, man. Well, that's probably going to do it here today for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go down there, hit that thumbs up button. It really would mean a lot to me. I haven't been putting as many videos out recently. And um, yeah, man, just this foot. It's like, it's gotten worse to like where it really hurts it for you even to like get pushed down. So I can't really walk. I kind of been crutching around. And as I said, next video, we're going to have something interesting in it. So make sure you check that out. But hopefully this will all get, you know, fixed soon. So we're doing what we can. Staying positive, 
Appreciate all y'all for all the freaking support as always. All I gotta say, man, so let's keep this rolling. Thank y'all for watching. I'm gonna go eat this. Also, again, staticseasoning.com. This is probably gonna be the cheapest this stuff is ever going to be. And I did want to say too, man, if any of you guys have any fishing spots or um yeah, if you live in Florida and want to do some fishing or really anywhere, if you guys go to my Instagram and send me a DM. I try to respond to as many as I can. Sometimes like it just is a lot, but if you guys want to fish or if you have any spots I should check out. Let me know because I want to do a lot of different things. And um, yeah, see y'all next video. You wanna know just where